Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Noah joined by Jay Harbaugh, uh, defensive backs coach as well as special teams coordinator. And uh, I do want to dig into both of those areas, Jay. First of all, thanks for joining me. Um, but second, I was thinking on my way here to the show tonight. You've got your grandpa here, Jack Harbaugh. Obviously, your dad is the head coach. You're here. You've got your kids. There's four generations of Harbaugh. You're right in the middle. What's it like having so much family around, especially four generations? Well, first off, thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, I'm really grateful for it. It's not something that I take for granted. It's a very neat thing, like you said, to be able to come in to, to work here and work with my dad. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, men and women that would love to have that opportunity to do, do what they love and do it with uh, their mom or their dad. So that's a very, very cool thing. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for that every single day. Just the proximity, being able to be uh, around, uh, you know, one of my biggest role models, but also to learn from him, a guy who I think is, is the very best in the world at what he does, and to be able to see firsthand, you know, the decisions he makes and all that stuff. And, and then you take it out of football, it's amazing to have my family be able to be around, you know, my grandparents and uh, them to be around their grandkids and stuff. So definitely very thankful for it and, uh, uh, you know, just really happy to be in, in, uh, in that situation and, and uh, you know, enjoying it. Can you guys go outside of football? Like, what's that like? I've always wondered, because I always see you guys interacting here. What's it like when you're outside of football? I don't know if you ever really get outside of football. <laughs> right? it's, it's in your blood. It it's, always it's, is. Uh, you know, when we, we uh, get together at, uh, at, you know, my dad's house, it, it, football always it always comes back to football. That's that's what we love. That's what we know. Uh, you know, and, and we have a lot of fun with it. The, you like you like throwing on a game and and uh, talking ball and that kind of thing. So uh, we we can function. Uh, <laughs> we, we 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 are regular regular people in that way. We can function and have regular conversations and stuff. But uh, inevitably things do come back to football, and, and we're not ashamed of that. Um, you mentioned you, you get a chance to learn from one of the best, and you have had a number of different hats here at Michigan, a number, number of different position groups. You're in the secondary now. What's that transition been like from, for you, and, and how's it going in the secondary? It's been phenomenal. It's an amazing thing when, you, when you're coaching the same game and you, you change positions, whether it's on the same side of the ball, opposite sides, or on, on special teams. There's so many different perspectives to this game, so I've really enjoyed getting a different perspective on the game. Uh, incredibly thankful for uh, Coach uh, Klinkscale, Klink, and Coach Minner um, being so welcoming. And they're—I mean—they're the best. Klink is is the best in the in the country at what he does. Uh, he's just a guru back there with the with the corners, with the safeties, the nickels. So, being able to learn from him day in and day out, and uh, and and to be in a scheme that's very back end friendly with Coach Minner has been a, uh, a fantastic thing. So uh, it's been a great transition, but really I just owe it to them uh, because of the way they've, they've received me and they've, uh, they've taught me. The big challenge this week with Penn State, a lot of athletes on the edge. Um, and how do you prepare your group for a game like Penn State? So the, the first thing was a great review of, of last week. Uh, the game against Indiana presented certain challenges in terms of the, the tempo that they played with. That was something that Penn State uh, used against us last year, a good amount of tempo. Uh, Indiana played with really wide splits. They had some, uh, some pretty good receivers, and they like to air, air it out a little bit. Penn State's a little bit different, but some of the sets that, that uh, IU got in and some of the challenges that, challenges that they presented were very nice to be able to get work on, uh, you know, make adjustments to, and then clean up today when we reviewed the film and everything. So I think that was the first step. And then aside from that, you take a big game like this where there's pressure, a good opponent. I mean, it really comes back to the basics of what's the call. Let's get aligned correctly. Let's play with great fundamentals. Play with our our hands on the perimeter. Great eyes, discipline on screens and and uh, uh, you know screen and goes and that sort of thing. And then you got to be great tacklers. Uh, Indiana with the splits, they presented the same problems in the run game. If a ball gets out outside of the box, there's potential for it to be a big play because the nearest overhang defender a lot of times isn't really very close. Yeah. Penn State presents some of those same problems, and then the backs are tremendous. So you got to be on point with your tackling. I know that obviously it's it's a copycat world, especially in football. When one team has success at something, another team is is bound to do it until you beat it. Mm -hmm. The wide receiver screen was a challenge last week. 
how do you guys coach that up and what's the key to defeating that t that play? Yeah, so it starts with with uh, proper alignment. Uh, like I alluded to before, there was a couple times against Indiana that we we weren't aligned quite the way that, that we wanted to be. And uh, so you got to clean that up in terms of just making sure that you're matching numbers with numbers and, and you have the proper width to defend those plays. Then after that, the eyes are really what's re what's important because you have the screens and then the screening goes. And so if you're if you're not looking at the right spot and not doing your job in terms of what you're supposed to be defending, you can open yourself up to a uh, the the kind of fake screen and they throw the the seam or the the wheel route. So it starts with alignment, then eyes, and then after that, if the ball's actually thrown out there, you got to have great block destruction, play with your hands, be able to be physical as a defensive back group, uh, and then tear off of blocks and and be good tacklers. So it all kind of works together. There's not really any one part that's uh, more important, but it kind of is one at a time there in terms of making sure that you set yourself up for success and then can finish the play. Well, I, I like it that you throw in some of these these key terms that I understand. Block destruction. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the, 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 you could have just led with that one. I've been like, okay, I get it. It resonates with everybody, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, Jamon Green. Uh, he has played extremely well. It. He hasn't been. Ch he was challenged early on, and it feels like. He's not the guy that, that, that quarterbacks really want to go after. What have you seen from him and, and his development at the corner position? He's a guy, really, from when uh, Coach Klink got here, you saw him get better and better and better. And there was a point, um, I don't remember the specific game, but probably somewhere through the middle of last season, he really took off. He's playing with his length. I mean, he's a really tall guy, very, very long arms. And when he plays with great technique, it's really difficult for a receiver to get off the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he, when he plays square, it's just hard for guys to operate. So uh, he, he's grown a lot technique-wise, confidence-wise. Uh, Coach Klink's done a phenomenal job, um, you know, coaching him. And Jamon's he's so mature. Uh, he's, he's really on top of it mentally. Uh, he works his butt off. He, he learns. He has learned the defense, and then he's taken it a step further and calling things out that – you know, a corner typically wouldn't notice the the splits, the backfield sets, the tight end alignments. I mean, he's really, really a step ahead now of the offense. And so I think you're seeing that mental preparation show up in the in the confidence and the speed he's playing with. Well, I want to talk about some more of your guys as well as special teams. Um, and, and that's been a huge weapon for Michigan over the last few years, especially since you took over. Uh, but we'll do that when we come back on the other side of this break. This is Inside Michigan Football from Learfield. Jay Harbaugh joins us here on Inside Michigan Football, uh, secondary coach and special teams coordinator. And, and I want to talk just about a few more guys. Rod Moore is going to join us um, in our next segment. I really enjoy getting a chance to talk to Rod. Your thoughts on him and where he is as a player right now. Rod, Rod's an ascending player. He uh, had a great season last year, has come back. He's bigger. Uh, he's heavier, a little bit sturdier. Uh, and he's all the same things he was last year, but, you know, just taken to another level. He can, uh, he can cover. He can play all the coverages. Uh, he can play man. He can tackle. He's an unusually good tackler for a guy who's not particularly bulky. Yeah. He's a little bit more of a, like a wiry build, but he's very, very strong, and he, he tackles with a good technique. So he's a guy who's a very well-rounded um, safety, and uh, him and Makari together, uh, those two, RJ, they give you a nice, nice uh, trio of guys that can kind of do everything. And, they, and if you have that, it, it gives you so much flexibility and it keeps you out of bad spots when each guy can kind of cover for the other one. Some guy can go to the post. Another guy can go can go down into the box. So you have a lot more flexibility. You're not covering up for weaknesses. So Rod's a big part of that. Well, you mentioned all three of those guys on the back end. We talked about Jamon Green. Uh, DJ Turner, Will Johnson, and it, when I say these names, it really feels like there's more depth in the secondary than there's been in a number of years here at Michigan with talent, speed, experience. All of those guys now are, are earning some experience. Will Johnson, it feels like he's getting more opportunity um, every single week. Where is he at, and is that true? Is he getting more opportunity? Yeah, Will certainly is. He's, uh, he's playing um, – you know, good amount of snaps every single week. Uh, he's a guy who, you know, we're not afraid to, to throw in there into the mix. And uh, like you said, it's a bunch of guys. There's depth there, and you need that. You really need to uh, to develop that depth. And the only way to do that is by playing guys. So uh, that's something that, that I've learned on the defensive side from uh, from Clink and uh, Coach Mentor, just the, 
how important it is to get the guys into the game. They get in, they, they have some good plays, some plays maybe that aren't so good. They learn from them, they get better. But if you don't play them, you'll never know. And uh, inevitably in this conference and in, in some of the, the battles that you, you, you face in some of these games and the snap counts get really high, you're going to need depth. So that's been something that's been really nice to uh, – to be a part of and witness is, is how you go about building that. And, and uh, like you said, those guys are doing a great job thus far. Special teams has become such a weapon for Michigan. Um, and I mentioned you're a special teams coordinator. I know you, a lot of the other coaches uh, chip in, but um, when, when you set goals for the special teams, what are, what are the conversations that you have? I know there's a bunch of different units, but what do you set as the goal for your special teams group? So we're not a huge goal group. Uh, we have four goals for every game, uh, and the four are uh, just very, very basic. The first is just to have the ball and not give the ball up. So no, no mishandled snaps, uh, no fumbles. Uh, if, you're, if it's a hands opportunity, you recover the ball, you know, you just 100% possession. Like, yeah. The very first thing is do no harm, right? Like, you, you, <laughs> yes. you want to you try to make plays, but... At, at worst, like let's not screw anything up, and, and not that you're playing scared, but that's the, kind of the baseline of the of the unit is let's be really smart and understand understand how how we can uh, you know help the other phases. Uh, we don't want to have any penalties. We've been poor in that regard this year. I think we have like four uh, in six games, which is uh, disappointing. Something that we're we're working on and emphasizing, trying to improve. Um, we want to hold the the opposing kick return unit, keep them inside the twenty five if they decide to return it. And then we want to have no punt return yards. Uh, we've had a few, but, you know, overall yeah. we've covered pretty well. Um, so we, we, we don't do a ton of goals. The, the thing that is more relevant is every week there's certain keys to the game in terms of who are you playing. You know, is it a really dynamic returner? Does he have a certain style of running that we need to uh, make sure that we're aware of and that we covered appropriately? Or is there a particular uh, punt rusher or... Uh, whatever it might be, so there's there's particular keys for each phase that we'll that we'll key in on. And a lot of people, obviously, when as soon as you say special teams, they think kickers. And you have two of the best in the country. Do you believe that you have maybe the best pair in Brad Robbins and Jake Moody? Absolutely, absolutely. I have total total confidence in that, and uh, just so much faith in those guys and the operation in general. Uh, they're such pros every day. You know, as they go about their business, their their preparation is fantastic. Uh, they're just the day in and day out throughout the week. And then you get to game day, the poise, the maturity. And, and um, you know, they hold themselves to extremely high standard. And overall, uh, so far, they've played at a really high level. And, uh, you know, just looking forward to, to continuing that. Well, there's a lot more that we could talk about, uh, but we're out of time. I appreciate your time. And uh, best of luck as you continue to prepare for uh, Penn State. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Enjoyed it. All right, we'll be back with Rod Moore here in just a few minutes. This is Inside Michigan Football from Learfield.